The sudden death of the artist, designer and architect Viktor Hartmann must have been a terrible shock to Madjest Mussorgsky. Five years earlier, the two men had met through a common friend, the music critic Vladimir Stasov. Mussorgsky and Hartmann shared a devotion to creating intrinsically Russian art and quickly became close friends. 1873, when Hartmann died, they were both still young men, Hartmann 39 and Mussorgsky five years younger, 34. A memorial exhibition of about 400 of Hartmann's works was organized by the critic Stasov at the Imperial Academy of Arts in St. Petersburg. Mussorgsky experienced an emotional crisis following Hartmann's death that resulted in an enormous creative outburst. He composed the pictures at an exhibition in June 1874 in just 20 days. Mussorgsky wanted to compose a musical memorial to his friend and he even planned to name it Hartmann. The piano cycle consists of 10 pieces inspired by Hartmann's paintings and other artifacts from the St. Petersburg exhibition. Many of the artworks are lost and we only have Stasov's short descriptions of them. In addition to Russian, Mussorgsky used Italian, French and Latin in the titles of the movements as Hartmann had painted many of his works during his travels in Europe. In the beginning of the cycle and between the pictures, Mussorgsky composed interludes, which he names, named promenades that depict the composer himself walking from one work to the next. My physiognomy can be seen in the interludes, he wrote to Stasov. So, uh, the outline of the story is based on the composer walking around the exhibition, observing paintings about, for example, a medieval troubadour quarrelling children, cute baby chicks, or an evil witch. However, the meaning of this music may go far beyond this picturesque imagery if, if we dig a little deeper. I've made a short list of the pictures at an exhibition's most important features. Uh, Mussorgsky's desire to create new Russian art, a desire that he shared with Hartmann, originated with his membership of so-called Balakirev's circle, later named Mogucha Yakuchka, the Mighty Five. The group comprised five young composers, Balakirev, Rimsky-Korsakov, Varadin, Sui and Mussorgsky himself, and was important to Mussorgsky during his twenties as he took theory lessons from Balakirev and received support from his peers in the group. The Mighty Five wanted to create a uniquely Russian approach to music, free from Western European influence, and got their inspiration from Russian folk songs, folklore, church music, the rhythm of spoken language, and the idea of the common man. Mussorgsky was also a social progressive artist who empathized with the poor and oppressed. Many of the pictures' pieces can be interpreted allegorically. For example, we may ask whether the Budlo is really just a musical illustration of a cart pulled by an ox, or whether the piece has more subtle meanings. Certain autobiographical allusions may be found in the music as well. The fact that Mussorgsky had no formal musical training has caused, had caused many to underestimate him as a composer. However, his lack of schooling seems to have given him a unique, innovative and unorthodox approach to writing music. When it comes to the cycle's structure, there is nothing amateurish about it, as it's entirely coherent in several ways. The most important means employed by Mussorgsky to create coherence is use of melodic variation. He takes little cells of the melody and works on them, finding new and innovative ways of making musical connections. His way of varying is thus very different from, for example, the developing variation technique common in the German music. The use of variation is most evident in the promenades, but also almost every movement has something that can be traced back to the promenades theme. So, the promenade melody in question sounds like this. And here 
are some examples of other promenades. So Mussorgsky uh, varies here the character of the theme, but doesn't change the theme very much. Uh, this is not the case in the other movements than promenades. Uh, the simplest way to understand the way how creatively Mussorgsky varies the theme uh, is to have a look in its interval structure. So first, there is descending second. Ascending fourth, second, ascending fourth again, which is, by the way, a uh, typical interval for Russian uh, folk music. Descending third, another descending third, and then the theme comes back with descending fourth and second. So uh, it seems that the most important uh, uh, notes in this themes, uh, theme will be and in minor mode they sound like and the relationship with between the promenade theme and uh, movement might be most, most evident in the final movement called the great gate of Kiev uh, it is in E flat major. This is the promenade theme in E flat major. And here are the important notes. And this is the theme of the great gates of Kiev. <laughs> middle part of the promenade theme is there as well. Another movement in the same key, uh, the E flat major, is uh, the Limoges. And here is again the uh, melody. And uh, in the, the theme of the Limoges. So one can hear the connection very clearly. Uh, it is also uh, rather easy to hear the connection in uh, the movements like Bütlo. in a minor mode and uh, 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 thus the promenade melody would sound like this. And, and now the uh, Büdlo theme is. So there is a connection. Another little bit similar uh, connection uh, between the theme of a movement and, and uh, the promenade melody is with Il Vecchio Castello, the movement called The Old Castle. So here we have everything that we need and in addition This part of the melody is now there as an inversion. 
Also, a movement called Goldenberg and Schmuile uh, shares this same, uh, same uh, pattern of important notes. In the middle section, that sounds like this. <laughs> Again, this movement shares the same DNA. The ascending fourth interval is uh, uh, in a very big role in a movement called Baba Yaga, the witch. So here Mussorgsky uses the ascending fourth pretty obsessively. Uh, and what we have left, now we have the descending third. And this is quite interesting thing. Uh, in uh, after Il Vecchio Castello, there is a promenade here. <coughs> This Mussorgsky takes and uses in the following movement called Tulleri. And in the next piece called Bündlo, that already had the, um, had the uh, promenade melody in its own theme, as the third, third motif in the accompaniment. Uh, now we might wonder if there are any movements uh, that use the descending second. And actually there is. In both of the two grotesque movements of the pictures of an exhibition, uh, the gnome, and the Baba Yaga uh, Mussorgsky uses this descending second uh, in in the in the gnome. The section is this. <laughs> and in Baba Yaga, uh, there is this section what uh, might kind of depict the evil laughter of the witch. <laughs> so uh, this makes me wonder if there is any variation of the uh, prominent melody in the uh, Ballet of the Unhatched Chicken, since it's the only movement that we haven't yet had in this list of pieces with uh, variation. So that piece is this. And here, actually, there is no melodical uh, connection, but there might be something else. The rhythm is exactly the same. Next, I will discuss further the movements of the cycle. Pictures of an exhibition starts with a grand promenade with a composer's indication in Italian, nel modo russico, in a Russian mood. The opening promenade is written in Russian folk style, where a soloist sings a tune and choir repeats it known as the antiphonal singing style. The 
the time signature changes between 5 to 4 and 6 to 4, emphasizing the broadness and continuity of the melodic line. The theme is repeated and varied over and over, starting on different beats, which is also typical to, uh, typical to Russian folk music, especially balalaika music. The piece is interrupted by a sudden appearance of the moon. Russian folklore, gnomes are little crooked and evil creatures that live under the earth and hide secrets. This movement may have an autobiographical allusion, as the composer mentions a shameful secret of often in his correspondence. This secret is thought to have referred to his epilepsy. I believe it is possible to see this edgy, brutal, painful and malicious movement as a depiction of an epileptic seizure, especially given that the serenity of the following slow promenade resembles very much the post-seizure feeling of exhaustion and relief. <laughs> The next movement, Il Vecchio Castello, the old castle in Italian, continues the journey away from the cruel reality and transports the listener to the Middle Ages. According to Stasov, uh, this movement is based on a lost sketch by Hartmann of an ancient Italian castle with a troubadour playing the lute in its courtyard. is rather long and its tempo marking is andantino, which may indicate that it shouldn't be played too slowly. Uh, the bass line of the piece remains the same G sharp throughout the piece, like an eternal peaceful heartbeat in the background. It creates an impression of stopped time and brings one's thoughts to the remote past. The piece is in the Siciliano rhythm and it resembles the song Serenade from Mussorgsky's Songs and Dances of Death. The song represents death wooing a young girl in the guise of a lover. Even though Mussorgsky composed the song some years after pictures, this leads one to question whether also the Vecchio Castello is actually somewhat darker than commonly thought. The following promenade brings us back to the present time. Soon we find ourselves in the Tuileries Park in Paris. The subtitle of the movement is Children Quarreling at Play. It is a humorous and charming capriccio and it is easy to imagine a beautiful day in a park with children playing and quarreling. The central motive is the dissenting third. Just as we have discussed. That motive is sometimes interpreted depicting a swing, and sometimes the children shouting their nanny, nya, 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 or perhaps thumbing the, their noses. Nya, nya, nya. The middle section of the movement sounds like the children are seeking consolation from their nanny after a quarrel. The 
painting that inspired the movement is lost, but I found an old photograph on Tuileries that gives some impression of the atmosphere. According to Stasov, Büdl portrays a heavy wagon pulled by an ox. The word Büdl means cattle in Polish, but it's also one of the offensive Russian words for peasants. Büdl is a work song much like the famous Volga Boatman. So it is a metaphor for heavy but heroic labor pursued regardless of obstacles and whippings. It is easy to imagine whiplashes here. Remembering Mussorgsky's social progressive mindset, it is easy to imagine this piece symbolizing the suffering and oppression of the Russian peasant. This painting by Hartmann is also lost, but we can get an idea of what an ox cart looked like from this old photograph taken in Helsinki during the 1940s. The following promenade is heartbreakingly beautiful. And it's interrupted by a rapid glimpse of the next movement's chickens. <laughs> ballet of the unhatched chickens got its inspiration from Hartmann's ballet dress sketches. The movement, famous for its descriptiveness, is very light and virtuosic and it's filled with grace notes. It is also the only humorous piece in the cycle. <laughs> The next movement, Samuel Goldenberg and Schmuile, is also known as Two Polish Jews, Rich and Poor. The movement is uh, presumably based on two paintings that Hartmann painted in the Sandomir ghetto in Poland and later gave the Mussorgskis. The first section portrays the rich character. Here Mussorgsky imitates the spoken language rhythm, reflecting arrogance and scorn. The middle section portrays the poor begging character. repetitive melody is often interpreted either as the character's trembling or stuttering as he begs money from his rich counterparts. To me, this resembles a lamentation with its repeated wailings. Why, 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 why? Uh, this is why I personally prefer not to take too fast a tempo in this section. The final section depicts the two characters quarreling. easy to imagine the poor one begging heartbreakingly for the last time.
The following long promenade is the watershed of the piece, marking the beginning of its second half. It is very much like the opening promenade, although its texture is broader. It ends with a surprise. The music is interrupted by a single note trumpet-like signal that leads us to the next movement, the Limoges Marketplace. The subtitle of the Limoges is La Grande Nouvelle, the big news. Mozart himself wrote in the margin of the score two paragraphs in French about things like women gossiping about neighbors, runaway cow and upper class ladies' red noses, but later crossed them out. The colorful pianistic texture creates an illusion of the hustle and bustle of the busy marketplace with all kinds of noises of everyday life. This, for example, may imitate laughter. The performance indication is allegretto vivo, sempre scherzando, so maybe one shouldn't play it as fast as possible. We then move suddenly to the catacombs of Paris. Catacombe Sepulcrum Romanum is an enigmatic and chilling movement. We can easily imagine the gloomy sounds of the dark space and the atmosphere created by the millions of bones of the dead. The following movement, Con Mortuis in Lingua Mortua, belongs together with Catacombe. Musoski wrote, Hartmann's creative spirit leads me towards the skulls and evokes them, causing them to glow green. Catacombe and Con Mortuis in Lingua Mortua can be understood as a psychological culmination point of the cycle. First, the latter is the only movement that is simultaneously a promenade and an independent movement with a title. Secondly, in this movement, Mussorgsky depicts how he meets his friend Hartmann for the very last time. So the piece is a valediction. According to Stasov, the hut on hen's legs, Baba Yaga, is inspired by Hartmann's sketch of a 14th century style clock. In Slavic folklore, however, Baba Yaga is a witch who steals, cooks and eats her victims, mostly children. She usually lives in a hut standing on hen's legs. The movement can be understood as the second of the picture's grotesque movements, the first being the gnome. The piece may also have autobiographical allusions. Stasov told Mussorgsky in one of his letters that he met Hartmann the first time in a masquerade in which Hartmann was disguised as Baba Yaga the witch. In the outer sections of the piece, it is easy to imagine Baba Yaga flying through the forest in a mortar, sweeping away the tracks behind her with a broom. 
In the middle section, the hut lurks in the forest, trying to lure children. The children that get caught are crushed and eaten. Here we can hear the cries of the victims. To me, the fast figures in the end of the movement create an image of Baba Yaga flying fast over the large forest. The Ataka transition to the last movement is psychologically ingenious, evoking the abrupt ending of the forest and the opening of an amazing view of the gate of Kiev in front of the observer. the grand pageant. The final movement is called Bogatyr Gates in the old capital Kiev. Bogatyrs were mythical heroic princes of the Middle Ages that lived in the area of Kiev, Ukraine. And that's why the movement is also called the Hero's Gate. Hartmann made his sketches of the Bogatyr Gate in the memory of Tsar Alexander II, surviving an attempted assassi assassination. Uh, the sketches won a national competition and he considered the design to be his best. The movement depicts a grand pageant, an orthodox chant. <laughs> hundreds of small and large bells. This is the beginning of the bell scene. Spectacular bell scene in the pictures at an exhibition's final movement resembles the coronation scene of the Mussorgsky's opera Boris Godunov and is second to none in the history of piano music. The gate that Hartmann planned was never built. Fortunately for us all, his dear friend Modest Mussorgsky built his music with, thus making it eternal.